This is Game Chat 1, episode 129. New Frontiers for High Res. Hey, man. You found Game Chat with Buona. Welcome to the show. Now here's your host, Buona McCall, with all the gaming news of this week. Uh, by the way, that's me. Greetings, folks, and welcome to episode 129 of Game Chat with Buona. We got a great show lined up for you. Thank you for coming by and listening to the show. We stream this, or we do this, create this show every Wednesday. Uh, for you all to listen to the best gaming news that we can find throughout the week so that you can uh, tell your friends. Yeah, you're like, I, I know what's going on in gaming. Anyway, <laughs> happy wild day or wild weekend or wild day. It's like the longest wild weekend ever. The last seven days, people taking days and weeks off of work for this new wild battle for Azeroth expansion. You probably have heard of it. Mm hmm. Just craziness. Also, we had Monster Hunter World release. It's just been a crazy week, but we got some good news. Some some spicy articles to talk about for Game Chat One, episode 129. And I hope you all enjoyed the show. So without further ado, let's get right to it. And for our first story, we're going to talk about High Res Studios. I caught one of this article actually today. High Res Studios, makers of the Smite Tribes of Sin, <laughs> Tribes of Sin, and uh, you know other games like uh, Realm Royale, and recently with um, uh, let's see, Smite Overwatch. Or I'm sorry, Paladins. I was thinking about Overwatch, but uh, the Paladin shooter. So those are the three big games that are, are housed up with um, with with high res studios at the moment. Paladin, Smite and Realm Royale. Funny, I should mention three different games because this article talks about how high res studios has decided to split into three new studios. The move is aimed to help development teams fulfill their maximum potential, man. My head's just spinning off of this. They're gonna they're gonna name the studios Titan Forge Games, Evil Mojo Games, and Heroic Leap Games. I think the only one that kind of sounds decent to me is Titan Forge. Evil Mojo, what, what why? What? Heroic Leap? <laughs> okay. So these three studios are gonna operate independently. Um, and they're gonna focus on each one of the games. Titan Forge will be managing smite evil mojo will be looking over paladins and heroic leap games will develop realm royale so all of these studios and again they're aimed to design or they're, they're aimed to this was aimed to help these developers stay more focused on their tasks i gotta wonder that maybe there was some internal uh, i don't know chaos going on where I guess a lot of people may have been asked to, to you know, move over to another project and help with some bug or or it, it, there probably was a lot of cross development that may have hindered progress because I, I this is not common to me that a company that makes multiple games will split into multiple studios where each studio works on a single game. Talk about a siloed <laughs> development process. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know what what to make of this. Um, I've never seen it before. It may have happened, but I've never, well, I don't recall seeing this. Um, just imagine if Blizzard did that, or Epic did that, or you know, other studios, EA, just like we're just gonna make separate studios to work on every game. Now, EA Sports is, you know, is one that kind of comes to mind, and um, you know, you got Dice over there, but those were acquisitions. Most of those were acquisitions, I think. So, the, hmm. It's, it's kind of a head scratcher. I don't know what to make of this. What do you guys think? I mean, Titan Forge, Heroic Leap, Evil Mojo, Heroic Leap, Evil Mojo, standalone studios to work on these games. Now, I, I don't think it's going to affect the games at all. I think the games will probably move on as expected. And probably, worst case scenario, it'll be the same business as usual. Um, honestly, I think it will maybe foster more. Uh, I don't know, focused efforts, as they say, fulfill their maximum potential. I, 
I, it might be a waste of money though. I mean, why do this? Why don't you just re retool and re I don't know, revamp what's going on internally? It's weird. So check it out, guys. Over on PCGamer.com, they got the details. High res splits into three new studios: Titan Forge Games, Evil Mojo Games, and Heroic Leap Games, to coincide with Smite, Paladins, and Realm Royale. And for our next story, we're going to continue to talk about high res studios and Realm Royale in particular. Realm Royale was a kind of a surprise success a few months ago when it hit. Uh, I think a lot of people were surprised that it was so hot on Twitch and also the concurrent player base was as high as 105,000 on Steam. But this article over on GetHype.com talks about how Realm Royale has lost 93% of its player base after peaking at 105k concurrent two months ago on Steam. It's already lost all those viewers and all those all those uh I, I guess you'd say players in two months time and it makes a great point if you talk if you read this article um it says uh one of the reasons realm royale's successful early access debut was the positive feedback was the positive feedback from players for being one of high res's most polished games players who like fortnite's aesthetics but don't enjoy the building mechanics were happy to have another option to the br genre that looked and played similar to Epic's breakout, breakout hit. Um, but apparently uh, it was just on the surface because if you they talk about the mixed reviews, half of the reviews have turned negative that were probably positive before on Steam. Players were citing issues with the balancing of the game's weapons, excuse me, and hit scan. And that's something I've heard in the Twitch circles is that the game is grossly uh, imbalanced. Um, is that there's some there's some cool game mechanics in play. There's some nice features. There's some good ideas, but right now the balancing is so out of whack and just so just so bad that players have moved on. They've they've gone either back to PUBG or going back to uh, to Fortnite. And I agree that I think a lot of people played this game because they didn't want to build. They just it's, they wanted the Fortnite type gameplay, but they just didn't want to have to build all these elaborate structures. They just wanted to fight. And um, that's why I mentioned players probably went back to PUBG, because I think a lot of PUBG players today who tried, excuse me, who tried Fortnite either didn't like the art style or they didn't like that you had to build as much. And then you got people who just call it, who just dismiss it as a kid's game, which I just I don't even consider their opinions because of the art style. Oh, it's a kid's game. I don't know where you've been in gaming the past 20 years. But uh wow. Uh this is a uh, this is big news because they 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 recruited a lot of big people according to this article and I was I was actually there. Um it says Skillshot and Keemstar's $100,000 weekly tournament which is now the only time popular streamers like Ninja, Summer 1G, and others still play Realm Royale live on their Twitch channels. So these big, big tournaments are keeping the game in the public's eye. But for how long? But for how long, man? Um, the Radical Heights and Culling 2, you know, deaths were a big thing in the past as well. That definitely going to affect this. It's going to loom over the head of this game because BR is a very volatile genre. And right now, only a couple are standing out. Just think about it. I mean, all these BR games are coming out left and right. But the only one surviving the test of time so far is PUBG and Fortnite. Hmm. And uh, <laughs> we got other games like Battle Right, which are going to be releasing a, 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 uh, a Battle Royale mode in the next couple of months. And it looks decent, but... Is it enough? Is it enough to survive? They're they're going to charge for that. The folks at Battle Right, they're going to charge for their Battle Royale game. Charge money. It's not going to be free. PUBG is not free either, but Fortnite is. So who's going to take down the Fortnite crown? Who's going to destroy Fortnite? Because let's just think back. I mean, less than a year ago, PUBG looked untouchable. PUBG looked untouchable. It looked like they were going to be the wow of shooters. Um, the numbers were just in, insane. Over a million concurrence on Steam. That was unheard of. So what's going to happen now? You know, that Fortnite has taken this crown and it seems to be growing. 
Looks like nobody's going to even touch Fortnite. So, I guess in situations like this, it's like WoW. The only companies that can kill these games are the companies themselves. So, the only company that can kill Fortnite or the only game that can kill Fortnite is Fortnite. The only game that can kill PUBG is PUBG. You know, that's what people were saying. And some of that rings to be true. Definitely rings to be true. Check it out, guys. Get hype has some nice charts and graphs talking about the viewership on Twitch, the Steam concurrency, and so on. About how Rum Royale has just lost almost all of their, their momentum. Will they be able to gain it back? Check it out, guys. And for our next story, we're gonna talk about Monster Hunter World. I end up purchasing this game on PC, even though I didn't. I'm gonna be putting out a YouTube video explaining that because uh I really I, I really was uh on the disappointed end of Monster Hunter World on the PS4. Um, and I'll talk about that in a bit. But the story I want to talk about now, as I, I have been living this problem on Monster Hunter World PC, is that there's a bunch of connection errors going on. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Monster Hunter World is a co-op game where you fight monsters together. You can fight together with people online. And you would match make with these people and uh, <clears throat> you would help them complete their missions or help them complete a fight. You could do it with friends. You could do it with strangers. Cool thing is that if you find yourself in a bond, you can fire up an SOS flare and random players from around the world. Well, I guess I'll say close to you uh, could join and help you out. <coughs> now, the issue is, is that this uh, this is kind of frustrating because you get in a fight or you'd be helping somebody and you just randomly get disconnected to the tune of like 50 to 60% of your online matches get DC'd at some point, <clears throat> which is kind of disheartening. It is really, really disheartening, especially when you're getting into it, you're almost done. The thing's almost dead. And then all of a sudden it freezes and then you disconnect. Oh, hey, I went through that way too many times on stream, uh, way too many times. It's something that I hope they address. And quickly, I should say, because this article on the Steam community from August 13th has stated just that. They said that we have been receiving numerous reports that players are experiencing connection errors several times after they depart on quests. We are currently investigating the cause of this and are working with Valve to resolve the issue as soon as possible. We will keep you informed of further developments in this matter. <clears throat> we thank you for your patience and apologize for the inconvenience that this has caused. So all we can do is wait. And uh, I think every time, like I've been streaming this on my live stream at twitch.tv slash Borna. Every time it comes up or every time I'm playing it, people say, have they fixed the connection issues yet? <clears throat> have they addressed the disconnects? I'm like, no, this is still going on. It's still happening. And uh, I really believe, I mean, I, I'm, as much as I like to blame the developer, Steam has been having some bumpy issues since they updated their Steam client to that latest version. Both performance-wise I mean, my, on my machine and also connectivity. There's been a lot of bumpy bump, bumps and bruises, man. They got, it, they got a lot of work to do on this new Steam client. So I really think it's related to that. I don't think, as uh, much as I want to blame Monster Hunter, I don't, I don't know. Though I really haven't tried any other games on Steam um, to connect and do multiplayer yet. So I can't really substantiate that claim. But still, <laughs> but still, uh, I can't help but think because I uh, can't help but think that because that, that client is kind of piggy. It, it's, it's pretty bloated. It, it's not streamlined at all. It feels very bloated, very fat. Like they really need to trim a lot of features or trim a lot of just code off of it i don't know they need to optimize it <clears throat> is the word i'm looking for it needs to get optimized so check the story out guys over on steamcommunity.com this is probably the only ding against monster hunter world this game has sold more it's the, it's the biggest game this year it has broken all the records well, i shouldn't say records it's the top seller this year it was really really high like i think 300 and something k um on steam Something really, really high. It was really, really high pl concurrency player count. And <clears throat> just looking at my Steam friends list, there's a ton of people playing this game, like at any given moment. So it's quite popular amongst the Steam community. So this is probably the biggest thing. If you see mixed reviews, if you see bad reviews, they're either crash related problems or it's probably, 
you know, a majority of the reviews are probably still the connection error. So let's hope it gets resolved, guys. Check it out over on steamcommunity.com. They got the details over there. And for our final story, we're going to talk about Torchlight. Man, talk about an old blast from the past. Some good memories of Torchlight 1 and 2 from the then Runic Games. And uh, we're going to talk about Torchlight and an announcement that was made a few days ago, which kind of confused me. A new Torchlight franchise from Perfect World called Torchlight Frontiers. And I was a little bit concerned about this because I didn't see any type of information at the time about Runic Games or any of the Runic Games developers. All I saw was Perfect World. And it was this vague trailer about Torchlight and fighting things and monsters. And, and that was it. It was like, I didn't know what type of game it was. I didn't know if it was going to be an ARPG still or... If it was going to be a tower defense, or I didn't know what it was going to be. It, it, it really didn't define itself very well from the trailer. So today, thankfully, I saw a follow-up video of Eric Schaefer, former head of Runic Games, which really, really, you know, settled my mind. Uh, it's a developer diary video about a new studio called Extra, Extra Games. I think it's called Extra Games. Uh, Extra, yeah. Uh, and he goes on to say that, you know, how the studio was formed, uh, how a couple years ago they wanted to do this and um, that they have come together now. They formed a studio in California. He's brought back some runic developers. He's brought some people, a bunch of his friends that he knew. And they're developing this Torchlight game called Torchlight Frontiers. The good news is that it's going to be an MMO ARPG, which makes me really happy. Because that's a genre that's kind of come to fruition more recently with like Marvel Heroes and other games like that. Um, and it's really, really cool to play MMO ARPGs. And up until now, Torchlight has been more of a, you know, single player with some co-op uh, optional stuff to it. Sorry, some some co-op optional stuff to it, but it never had an MMO feel. So now we're going to get Torchlight. In an MMO capacity, and I'm I'm kind of excited about it now. That I'm like, oh okay. Before I was kind of confused. I was like, what is? I thought Frontier was just not Frontier. I thought um, I thought Perfect World was just going to be taking assets from them and just making something to make money off the assets. I was like, oh, what are they doing to Torchlight? And then when I saw familiar names, and I saw developers, and I saw what they were doing. I was immediately put at ease and I love the Torchlight franchise, let me tell you. And I'm so happy that it's back and I'm really, really happy that it's going to be back in an MMO ARPG capacity. I'm going to be following this one closely. You're going to hear me talking about this a lot. Pretty much every time there's a new story, I'm probably going to be talking about it here because <laughs> I love Torchlight, man. So check the story out. I got the, both the YouTube videos. I got the um, I got the original trailer that was released. And I have the developer diary video where uh, Eric Schaefer talks about um, uh, talks about what the studio is and what their goals are. So we're going to be following this one very closely, guys. Check it out. It's up on YouTube. Let's go Torchlight Frontiers. Yeah. And that concludes our show. Ooh, that was bumpy. Sorry about that, guys. I, I'm having allergies. I'm like I can barely say two or three sentences without coughing or, or clearing my throat. Uh, it's been one of those days. I, I don't know if it's the air or what, but thank you for bearing with it. Uh, now that the show is over, it's actually starting to clear up. That's how it actually happens almost every time. It's crazy. Feel free to follow me over on Twitch, guys. That's where I live stream. Uh, that's where I do a majority of my content. Twitch.tv slash Buona. And I've been recently putting up uh, videos. I've been putting up Let's Play videos up on YouTube, so you can check those out. I've got two playlists going right now. I've got Monster Hunter World and I've got Fortnite Save the World. So what I'm doing is that I'm taking my live stream efforts and I'm basically cutting them up into a let's play format, 30 minute segment videos and long playlists. So you can just watch them at your only earliest convenience on YouTube. And I'm going to be doing that today after the show as well. I got a, a couple of days worth the stream to chop up and upload to YouTube. So that's youtube.com slash Buona. It's going to be more regular content other than just game chat with Buona because I do upload game chat with Buona in a video format up to YouTube as well. I'm also on Spotify, on iTunes, and on uh, Google Play for Game Chat with Buona. Just search for Game Chat with Buona. You should see me there. You can subscri subscribe there. 
Also, Patreon, guys. Patreon.com slash Buana. If you want to support me monetarily, I do this full time now. This is how I make my money. It's how I pay the bills. How I bring home the bacon. If you want to support me monetarily, just with a flat dollar amount, I got one. Oh, anything as low as one dollar all the way up to two hundred dollars. If you want to become a patron, feel free to go to Patreon.com slash Buana. As a result of that, you get special Discord rights on our Discord server. And also, I post weekly newsletters, which will be going live today as well, about what's going on in the stream. Kind of like a behind the scenes newsletter about twitch.tv slash one of one of that TV slash youtube.com slash one all that stuff. <laughs> so thank you again for listening and watching, guys. It has been a, uh, a very, very, very exciting week. So I look forward to next week and give you guys another show. Take care. Everybody have a great day and I will see you all next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Please comment, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And make sure you click the bell to be notified. Otherwise, you ain't gonna see this video. Wait, how did you see this video? Um, okay, bye.